everybody, Carla Nicole. Um, just wanted to chime in a little bit and talk about something that I think is very important. You know, um, I wrote an article about turning a blind eye. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very concerning when you see just across the board how the community has really um, lost the um, desire to um, care about other people. And, um, you know, if you are um, a spiritual person or a person that um, has any type of spirituality whatsoever, you want to be mindful that um, we do need to have concern for other people. Um, and loving our, 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 our neighbors and loving our, our fellow man is essential and very important. Um, I'm just, I'm really concerned that, um, just across the board, you're seeing more and more people really not caring about someone else as much as they should be, um, even if there is a relation to you or not. I think that, you know, um, if you see something that's dysfunctional or you see something that's chaotic or you see something, you know, within your realm or scope in life, and you see something that's not really um, functioning, functioning properly, you need to say something, do something. Um, you know, you see a child that, that's, you know, going the wrong direction or or you see a family falling apart, or you see a marriage going through hell, and, you know, you feel you have some type of wisdom to assist and help. Rather than turning a blind eye and saying, you know, that's not my business, I have nothing to do with that, begin to, to actually have some concern for this. I mean, you know, marriages are falling apart. Um, children are being abused. Um, men and women can't get along and all of these things are happening because a lot of people really haven't built a unity and trying to help other people to do better, be better. Um, you know, when you look at, um, you know, other, other places like internationally and you see how, you know, marriages are lasting Yes, marriages are arranged, but they're they're working. And let me tell you what I think is the reason why here we we are choosing our own mates and, and things of that nature, but we're really not staying together because there is not a um a community around the relationships. Um, you know, if someone's having marital problems we go and expose it or, or we laugh about it or we talk behind their back or we try to come up with a way to split them apart. Instead of saying, hey, let's, let's really wrap our arms around them and try to enhance their, you know, their desire to be together. You guys got married, right? So something was in, in, in harmony before, but now let's just try to work it out. I mean, you have to understand sometimes relationships don't work out. I get it. But if there's a way that we can try to help relationships get better rather than highlighting all the bad that's going on, maybe things would change. I mean, we spend more time talking about everything, all the bad relationships, who's cheating on who, who's sleeping with this one and that one and, and all that. But you really never see people say, hey, let's let's gather around this couple that is having marital problems and let's try to help them. But you're not seeing that. It's just not happening. And it's, it's very concerning. I just feel like, you know, I think relationships would last better if we spent more time trying to enhance relationships, trying to, con you know, give people resolutions to the to the, you know, the situation that's happening. And then here's the other thing that concerns me. You know, you see something going on in a family that is just completely and totally dysfunctional. And we say, that's not my business. I don't have anything to do with that. 
But hey, you know, if you could find someone in that family that maybe can, you, you know, you can reach and, and get them to hear you, then try to enhance them. Like, look, what's going on in your family is dysfunctional. Let's come up with a plan to to reconnect, to restore the family. But people want to spend more time like, I don't have any, I don't want anything to do with that. That's that's not my business. It is your business. Because if your neighbor's family's falling apart and your neighbor's neighbors are falling apart and then, you know, all these people are falling apart and you don't want to help them and you have the means to, then, you know, we, we're just sitting idly by. That's not okay. You know, there's, you know, I, I guess because I had a, a huge example and I talk about it all the time, but I had a prime example, which was my mom. And, you know, I had many friends and, 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 and family members that she would reach out and say, hey, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Um, if it was a child that was in need or a child didn't have, she would go out of her way. And, and even though she had me as her responsibility, she would go out of her way to make sure she could reach that child or reach that family and try to help them restore. But, you know. My mom got that example from my grandfather. My grandfather it was well known as the peacemaker in the family. You know, one of those people that say, hey, you guys got all this chaos going on. Let, let's have a family meeting. Let's sit down and cut, try to figure out how can we get back to, you know, homostasis in the relationship? How can we get back to beauty and, and, and remembering that, hey, togetherness. My grandfather was big about talking about togetherness. Everybody's separate now. Nobody wants to connect. Everybody wants to be like, well, that, that's not my business. But you should make it your concern if, if the community has more um, people caring, then we wouldn't be in this position where we're always miserable and feeling alone. Why is there so much depression out here? Why? Because there's a lot of people that don't feel people care. And, you know, it's concerning. And I actually feel like, you know what? Love thy neighbor. Those that are Christian, aren't we supposed to be loving our neighbor? Well, loving thy neighbor doesn't mean speaking and saying hello and throwing a hand up. Loving thy neighbor is giving a damn, giving a care, wanting to help, trying to figure out result resolutions to all this chaos. You know, I think it's important that we reach out and try to restore restore you know what's going on not to say everybody's problem should be your problem that's not what i'm saying but what i am saying is if you have a chance to assist and help someone see the light at the end of their tunnel why not help why feel that it's not my business so i don't have to help well it it's it's really not helping the community if we're not reaching out and trying to restore problems that's going on in the community. You know, I, I, I just, it's very, it's very discerning. Yes, Bo, it, communication is everything, which means we have to talk to each other. We spend more time gossiping. Why are we gossiping about the ills, the societal ills, rather than coming up with a, a, a sit down and say, hey, how can we get back to the old school way of thinking? You know, like old school parents, man, you know, hey, if I see, you know, your kid out here acting a fool, I'm going to pull that kid aside and say, hey, that's not okay. What are you doing? I mean, you know, your parents wouldn't be okay with this behavior. Why are you doing that? That's unacceptable. Come with me. Have a seat. I want to talk to you and give them some type of guidance, direction and give them correction. But I feel like some parents or people have an issue with you reprimanding their children. But if I'm an elder in the community, at this point, I'm considered an elder. I've been around a long time and I care about your child because your child to me is the next generation. I should have a right to say, hey, uh, -uh no, that's not OK. Come here. Let me talk to you. And, and and provide them with direction and correction because I care. And you want to tell me 
Don't be talking to my kid like that. You tell me and I'll handle it. Not always is that okay. Because that reprimand may need to be dealt with right here and now. Okay? Here's the other thing. Yes, Bo, it does take a village. And here's the other thing. The other means is when we tell a child that they need to be corrected because we care. You know, that's letting that child know, hey, I can't be out here acting a fool because I got eyes on me. So now the discipline that you provide to that child is now to help them self-correct and understand that their behavior is affecting not just them, but everybody else around them. And it is giving them a second idea to wait a minute. Let me think about this. Maybe I need to really keep my mind on what I'm doing because what I'm doing, it can affect other people. Because children need direction. They need discipline. It just is what it is. Kids need direction and correction. So we need to be mindful that we can't tell people, don't correct my children. No. You know, my thing is, I tell people all the time, you guys know my child. You guys know me. You guys know my children. If my children are out here acting a fool, please, by all means, correct them. Because you know I have a standard that I stand by. And if my child, either one of them, are doing something that is not okay or that you feel is disruptive to the community and the flow of what I say is okay, by all means, you have the right to, to reprimand or correct my child. I don't have a problem with that. You know, as long as it's within, you know, just don't cuss my kid or something like that, but as long as you're telling them, hey, uh-uh, come over here that's not okay sit down have a seat your mom you know your mom would not go for this and that is unacceptable behavior look i'm 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 glad because at the end of the day i can't be everywhere i can't be everywhere my daughter or my son is at i can't i just can't be everywhere so if i can't be everywhere i need other eyes on my kid and i feel like you know, as an elder at this point in the community, I have to also have an eye on your kid. And I would not treat your child any different than my own. I'm going to say, hey, no, that's not okay. Your behavior is not okay. You need to correct that. And I think that the reason why I'm so big about killing apathy in the community at this point is because it's not doing us or serving us well at all. When we are, when we are allowing just nonsense to go on, you know, we, we see kids shooting each other, killing each other, acting a fool, cussing each other, um, you know, doing drugs and, and thinking it's okay. How they're conducting themselves is not okay. We have to set standards for our children so our children know, ooh, okay, this is the confines to which I need to be operating in. This is where I need to stay focused. This is where I need to be, you know, um, managing my life. Because, listen, you can say I don't care about it now, but if it hits your front door, then you want to care. No, you got to care before it hits your door. Because all those kids acting a fool out here and we don't care. Oh, it doesn't have nothing to do with me. And say, for instance, they show up to your house and break in your house. Now you care. No, you got to care before it gets to your doorstep. It's a, it should be important to you, other people's children, as much as your own. Because, hey, they are a part of the community and they're our future. If we don't take into account how important it is our kids are, we have to set the standards. Yes, Bo, we have to set the standards. If we don't set the standards and explain to them and express to them the importance of of conducting themselves in such a manner that is proper, these children will go out here and run rapid. And then they'll just do what they want to do. And then they have no means of understanding discipline. Nor do they have any respect for, for their elders because they don't have any elders to teach them nothing. And they're looking at it like, well, I don't have to respect you. They look at adults as their equal. And that is not okay. This is another problem that I'm having. I'm covering a lot tonight, so bear with me. My other problem is stop being friends to your children. Children need to have boundaries and don't have a blurred line 
as to what is okay to say to their parent and what's not okay to say to their parent. You can't be out here just disrespecting your mother and father. You can't be out here just disrespecting your parents and your teachers and your and your elders. And, you know, just basic stuff that we knew in our generation wouldn't fly. There are certain things I was not allowed to say to an elder. I was not allowed to disrespect. I was not allowed to be um, out here just acting a fool. My mom used to tell me before I left for school, you're going out here and you are on stage and understand something. You represent me and your father. What you do outside these doors represents us. So make sure you are mindful of your behaviors. So that stuck with me. I have somebody to represent. I am a part of the Willis household. If I go out here and do something to dishonor my mother or my father, and they have a disappointed look on their face, there's nothing worse than that. I never wanted to have that ever have my parents say they were disappointed in me. So we need to also set that standard for children now and explaining to them, you are a part of this community. Take pride in your community. When you teach children about pride and about how important it is to conduct themselves in a certain manner, you will find they will be able to hold their head up, pull their shoulders back, have confidence and, and be, um, you know, strong willed because they're like, wow, you know, okay. I have something to be proud of. Don't be out here acting a fool and cursing each other and disrespecting and acting a, acting a fool and then expect for us to be uh, parading behind you and celebrating that. You as a parent have no right to be out here partying in with your kids. No right. You have no right to be out here cussing your kids out. That's inappropriate behavior. And then you want to wonder why these kids go to school and they disrespect and, and 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 talk negative to their to their teachers that's not okay you know what i'm saying it's just not okay thanks for sticking around bo i appreciate you um but again you cannot do that you you have to set, set the standards for your children and children are our community children are our future we can't sit idly by and let these kids just act a fool and not say anything and people that have an issue with me reprimanding your children, I feel sorry for you because you don't understand. It takes too many times for a child to act a fool and really not get a reprimand until they're out here getting handcuffed by a cop or getting beat up by a cop. Then we're concerned. Now it's, oh my God, look at what happened. No, we have to correct before it gets to that. If we don't, if we don't correct, if we don't discipline, if we don't teach and preach to these kids and we don't lead by example and we don't care or have concern for them and we look and see them acting a fool and we turn a blind eye to it, it is doing us a disservice. Community is falling apart because we're not unionizing our focus and how we are maturing our people. We have to get better with what we're doing. We have to care about other people. The breakdown of the family in the black community is so bad right now because nobody cares that John and, and Leslie are divorcing. Nobody goes over there and says, hey, can, can we try to make this work? Can we come up with a resolution? Is there any way we can get back to unionizing this family? Because, you know, your divorce is affecting not just your family, but it's affecting the community. Because as you split, things happen. And, and changes happen. And children are all over the place afterwards. We have to think about this. Oh, it's somebody else's business. No, it's, it's our business. It's our community. And if we don't focus about how we can restore the family, how we can restore um, these marriages out here, how we can restore relationships, how we can restore children then it's all going to fall apart. And then we wonder why. I just wanted to st stop and talk about this because we have to kill the apathy. We really have to kill the apathy. We really need to go back to caring. And if in any way you have power 
to stop and listen to a child saying, look, I'm having some issues. I I don't have direction. I'm not sure what I want to do in life. I'm confused. I'm having problems. If you can stop and just listen and then try to give them some type of resol- resolution, you'd be surprised how much you will impact that child's life. I mean, I'm just hoping that I'm get, getting through to some people and um, just giving you a different suggestion. Don't care less when it's outside your front door. Because you never know if that same thing you're caring less about shows up to your door. And then you want to have concern. You don't want to wait. You want to help them now. So this is Carla Nicole. I know I went a little long today, but I just wanted to reach out and and really pull off this campaign of just getting rid of the apathy. We can do it as a community, one person at a time. So I hope this helps. Hope everybody has a wonderful Monday. I guess it's Monday already, seeing how it's 1230 at night. Eastern time anyway. So um, I hope this helps. Signing off, Carla Nicole, best kept. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye.